All right, folks. So <clears throat> this is how you catapult calculate. Catapult calculations. All right. When you fire your catapult, there's your little catapult. Okay. You're going to time from when it fires to when it hits the ground. You're also going to know the distance. Okay. Or displacement. So you know your displacement and your time. The reason why you know this is because you're going to walk it off uh, on the floor. You're going to use meter sticks. You're going to walk it off on the floor. So let's do an example. Okay, example. Let's say you fired it a total of 15 meters. And it had a t flight time of 1.7 seconds. So obviously if you fire it at 45 degrees then you will have gotten the maximum distance 45 degrees is the best launch angle for distance okay so you're going to have to find out the height the distance y and you're going to have to find out <clears throat> the velocity x and you're going to have to find out the velocity y. Okay? You're going to have to find all that from just knowing the horizontal displacement, which is delta x, d, x. Delta x, displacement x, which means it goes that way. And the time that it took to hit the ground from when it was fired, 1.7 seconds. All that you're supposed to find. Well, how do we do that? Let's see. We should know from <coughs> physics class that if you're talking about anything that has to do with the y, then you're talking about our two little equations here that we know to find the y vertical direction, which is your delta y equals initial velocity y times time plus one half gravity times time squared. Also, you have your final velocity y squared equals your initial velocity y squared plus two times gravity times your delta y. Okay? So that's for the y direction. You can use that to find distance y. You can use that to find velocity y. And again, that goes up and down. What doesn't ever change is the velocity x. Velocity x never changes. Velocity x is equal to distance x over time. Okay? Well, right now, you can already find that. You can already find the velocity x. You know your distance x is 15 meters. You know your time is 1.7 seconds. So you can already find your distance y. All right, excuse me, your velocity x. You know your distance x. You know your velocity x. You can already find them. Okay? So let's go on to the y. Well, how in the heck do I find that? Well, you know the time. But the time is for the total trip. The total trip. The whole thing. How much time is it for the projectile to reach this part, the apex, the apex, right there, the apex? How much time is it for that? What do you think? It's one half the total time because half the journey, it's going up, half the journey, it's going down. So the total time to the apex is half the total. So that would be 1.7 seconds divided by 2, which is 1.35. Or excuse me, 0 0.85. 0 0.85 seconds. Okay? That's the time you're going to use to get to this point here. All right? That's the time you're going to use in these equations. All right? 0.85 seconds. So we need to find the distance y. We need to find the distance y here. Okay? Which equation are we going to use? Which equation? That is right. We're going to use this equation here. Okay? We need to find the distance y. Well, <clears throat> do we have an initial velocity y? Okay? We don't have an initial velocity y. We don't have an initial velocity y, okay? Right here, we don't have an initial velocity y. 
The common mistake the students make is they try to find they try to find the velocity y initial here. Okay, it's too tough for us to find the velocity y initial here. We're not going to do it there. All right, the vy and the vx. We're not going to do it there. We're going to pretend that this part of the journey, this part of the journey, is exactly the same as the end part of the journey. Okay, exactly the same as the end part. All right, so I'm going to erase all this. Hopefully you've gotten that concept. I'm going to erase all this. All right, big fat eraser. Here we go. All right, Mr. Sells Khan Academy here. So we're not going to find the initial velocity coming off the catapult. We're going to pretend that it's a free fall. We're going to pretend it's a free fall. And we're going to help us solve this problem in reverse. So we have our object up here. We have a little object, our projectile. Okay, and we're going to find the distance y, and we're going to find the velocity y, all right? But we're going to find it as if it was starting here and ending here. Now remember, the time it takes to go is half. It's half, so it's 0 0.85 seconds to get to there. All right, 0 0.85 seconds to get to there. So now we're going to use a little equation here again. We're going to use this equation. The initial velocity here is zero. We need to find the final velocity y. Okay? Now the final velocity y right here, as it hits the ground, the final velocity y as it hits the ground, will be the same thing, will be the same as the initial velocity y on the other side. Same as. Okay? So here we go. We're going to find the distance y. Well, how do we do that? <clears throat> this was zero. So we have one half, and we have a negative distance, so it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.85 seconds squared. Okay, so go ahead and calculate that. That is 0 0.85 squared divided by 2 times 9.8 negative. So that is a distance of negative 3.54 meters. Okay, so negative 3.54 meters from the top to the floor. That's how high your projectile went. For your final velocity, final velocity y. I'm sorry I'm so messy. Sorry about that. Let me erase this. All right, our final velocity y, our final velocity y, we're going to use this equation. Okay? Now, <clears throat> our final velocity y, we already said our initial velocity y here was zero. So we're going to cross that out. We already know our distance y. We found it. it's 3.54 meters. So all we do is we do final velocity squared equals 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 3.54 meters. And it would be negative because it's falling. Negative. Okay. So your final velocity y is the square root of all that. <clears throat> which is the square root of 3.5 times 9.8 times 2. Square root of 68.6. And it's 8.28 meters per second. Okay? 8.28 meters per second. So 8.28 meters per second is the final velocity that it hits the ground. And it's also the same velocity as it leaves the ball, or it leaves the catapult. So the last thing is, let me erase all this. Erase all this. I'm sorry. Once again, I'm sorry. It's so messy. Okay. 
race and race and race like Khan Academy. All right. So once again, here's our little ball. It's coming off the catapult. The initial velocity, we found that. And all coming off the ball, and it was what? 8.28 meters per second. Okay. And then the velocity, x, was uh, <clears throat> 15 meters divided by 1.7 seconds. We did that at the first part. All right. 15 meters divided by 1.7 seconds, and that's 8.82. 8.82 meters per second. And actually, I'm dyslexic. This should have been 8.82 also. Okay, 8.82 meters per second. And guys, guess what? That and that are the same, which means that's 45 degrees. Perfect launch angle. All right. Watch this video twice, three times. See if you can do the calculations on your own.